Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining to the next session of our webinar series. Today, we have Lubov Chuprikova from Autonoma University of Madrid in Spain. She'll be talking about a pipeline for bacterial papers. Before we get into the talk, um, I just wanted to say that if you want to participate in our next webinar series, uh, please follow us on Twitter. Our handle is ISCBSE. With this, uh, I give the floor to Lubov. Lubov, right, you can start. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. And I would like to thank ISCBSC Council for the opportunity to present my talk today here. Uh, I will be talking about uh, the Expo Pipaline Pipeline for identification of bacterial pipaline. Okay. So pipalines are a group of uh, novel mobile genetic elements that were found in bacterial, uh, that were found integrated into bacterial genomes. And sometimes uh, they also can be found as plasmids. Uh, the hallmark of pipalines is the presence of a special type of DNA polymerase that is uh, represented as a red arrow here. And uh, it was called uh, primary independent uh, pole B or PI pole B. Apart from having uh, special biochemical characteristics, uh, PI pole Bs, uh, um, the phylogenetic analysis showed that PI pole Bs form a distinct clade within family B DNA polymerases. And apart from PI pole B, uh, pipalines also often encode for the recombinases of tyrosine or serine superfamily, uh, protein or restriction modification systems, and other mobilization proteins. Uh, they often also int uh, introduce into the tRNA gene, uh, and this was concluded after uh, the terminal units or ATT sites were identified. <clears throat> Just a quick reminder: ATT sites uh, is a um, ATT sites are short subsequences that are recognized by recombinases and uh, perform integration and excision of. Uh, Bacterial, bacterial phages or mobile genetic elements. <clears throat> the best known example is uh, uh, bacteriophage uh, lambda. It's circular, circularized uh, DNA, has an ATTP site, while a uh, host bacterial chromosome uh, contains an ATTB site. site. Uh, these sites share a short homologous region, and uh, they are recognized by the phageal integrase. And uh, after the integration, eight new ATTL and ATTR sites are formed. And uh, these uh, sites actually represented as uh, direct uh, repeats uh, that flank uh, a prophage DNA. Uh, I mentioned several uh, bacterial pipalines that were characterized in the first study, uh, but uh, little known about these elements. Uh, we don't know their biological role. Uh, and their significance, and also there is little evidence of their horizontal transfer. So, <clears throat> to facilitate the accumulation of knowledge about pipelines, uh, we decided to create a bioinformatics software uh, that uh, will be able to predict pipelines by looking for pipeline specific markers. Specifically, we highlighted uh, two of them uh, it's uh, the presence of the Apple B gene and the presence of terminal direct repeats uh, that uh, would allow us to identify uh, element boundaries. Apart from this, uh, we, would like to, uh, we would like our pipeline to be able to restore the structure of disrupted pipeline. By disrupted pipeline, I mean the situation where uh, uh, pipeline features are located on different contexts. Uh, and it it uh, it may it can be the situation when, uh, for example, we are working with uh, uh, incomplete genome assemblies or metagenomic assemblies, for example. <clears throat> so our software will be is represented here as a pipeline 
that we will start analysis with uh, the genome sequences in pasta or multi-pasta format as input, and uh, we'll perform several, several, several analysis tests and output uh, people in sequences and uh, their annotations uh, in commonly used formats. And we would like to use uh, this pipeline to create a people in database uh, that will help us uh, in, in, in further detailed analysis of people in by comparative uh, pan genome and the phylogenetic methods and other methods. Uh, so um, let's look uh, in uh, uh, precisely at uh, the pipeline steps. First, uh, we uh, we scan for the PA POB gene, and here we decided to use an HMR tool because um, uh, PA POB sequences uh, from different uh, bacterial genomes share little similarity. So we need to uh, find remotely homologous sequences, and for this purpose, we build an HMM profile. Uh, using known PAPLB sequences. And then <clears throat> we searched this profile against the sequence database. Uh, in our case, it's a genome open reading frame. Next step, uh, we uh, look for the ATT repeats or terminal direct, uh, terminal direct repeats. And uh, it's, it's worth to say that this step is not that easy uh, as it might seem um, from as it might seem at the beginning, because from the studies we know that ATT repeats uh, are not necessarily identical. Uh, they share homology regions that might be as short as uh, six base pairs. Then we also know that tRNA and tRNA genes often used used as integration sites, but uh, actually other genes also can be used. <coughs> Taking uh, this into account, we decided to proceed in two ways. First, uh, we can look for already known ATT sites. Uh, for example, from uh, uh, our study on the E. coli piperines that I will be talking, uh, I will I, I will talk about this about about this later. Uh, uh, we know we know uh, an ATT sequence um, <clears throat> that we can look for uh, using BLAST. Uh, and um, in case we haven't found AT, any known ATT sites, we can proceed with the DENOLA search. Uh, in the DENOLA search, I first look for short direct repeats around PAPOB gene. Uh, for this, uh, I just uh, align uh, the subsequence that is up, uh, 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 upstream of PAPOB to the, to the subsequence that is downstream of PAPOB. Uh, after mm, we found uh, uh, direct repeats, uh, we filter uh, them uh, to leave only those uh, that overlap with tRNA or tmRNA gene, and they, those will be our ATT repeats. So after we found PIPOBs and ATT repeats uh, in our genome, in most of the cases we already can extract people in sequences, uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, in some cases ATT, uh, uh, in some cases, ATTs and PAPOBs can be uh, found on different contexts. And um, since we know, uh, we expect expect some structure uh, that uh, people in might possess, uh, we uh, can actually, in, in most of the cases, we can actually create a single record from this context. Uh, just uh, putting an assembly gap feature of unknown length uh, in the place of gaps. So, um, so uh, when scaffolding or restoring the structure of people, we follow several simple assumptions. Uh, first, uh, ATT repeats are headed in the same direction as the YADU repeats. Uh, second, is obvious PIPOB sitting within ATT sites. Uh, then, if ATT site is if one of the ATT sites overlap with tRNA or tmRNA gene, we have considered this ATT as right side ATT. And um, when PIPOB gene uh, was found alone on the contact, uh, this contact direction was set so that PIPOB is headed towards uh, tRNA gene, as it is in most people in. 
uh, following this assumption, uh, uh, we can uh, mm, uh, highlight eight uh, scaffolding scenarios that can be uh, uh, performed by our pipeline. And uh, most of these scenarios we have already tested on in complete genome assemblies. And uh, the found uh, the pipeline was able to uh, restore uh, proper people in uh, element structure. So after we have uh, uh, records, uh, people in sequences, our records, uh, we also would like to annotate the gene uh, because uh, mm, uh, already present annotations might be incomplete and not accurate. Uh, so we do it uh, using uh, by running PROCA, but uh, it's a bacterial annotation uh, genome annotation tool. Uh, after annotation, uh, we include information about previously found APT site, sites into uh, the annotation files, and uh, uh, additional optional step uh, uh, in the current version of the pipeline is uh, to include a coloring scheme uh, that would help us to visualize our people links uh, using EasyFix software. The pipeline is written completely on Python. I used several third-party libraries such as BioPython, uh, Click, uh, uh, which is a library to create nice common line interfaces, and the uh, Prefect library, which greatly helps in managing the pipeline workflow. Uh, pipeline will be available soon on GitHub. Uh, for those of you who would like to try it, uh, I welcome to email me or to uh, find me in Twitter, and we will be glad to uh, provide you an access uh, to the pipeline. <clears throat> uh, a couple of words how it can, uh, can be installed. Uh, it, it, uh, you will be able to install it uh, from source uh, using Python package installer pip. Uh, the drawback of this uh, method is that uh, you will need to install separately non-Python dependencies such as HMR, Common Line Blast, Proca, and others. And uh, so uh, to make uh, the pipeline installation uh, reproducible, we provide also users with Docker image. And uh, also it, uh, pipeline can be installed and run under the Conda environment. In the end of the talk, I of my talk, I I, I would like to present another study that we did uh, in parallel with pipeline implementation, and uh, it uh, was recently published in the paper uh, list at the bottom of the slide. Um, in this this study was dedicated to the analysis of pipelines from E. coli genomes, and we decided uh, to start with E. coli because probably. Uh, they are genomes most abundant uh, in public databases and uh, uh, it's well-known model uh, which includes not only pathogenic but commensal organism. Uh, so um, first what we did, uh, we retrieved uh, potential people in encoding E. coli uh, genomes from the NCBI database and uh, we were able to retrieve 67 different E. coli genomes. <coughs> Uh, then we also had access uh, to the, uh, to a big collection of uh, E. coli strains uh, from uh, the Spanish uh, reference laboratory of E. coli uh, in uh, collaboration with the uh, uh, University of Santiago Compostela in Spain. And uh, they have a really big collection of uh, strains and isolate all over around Spain and uh, include uh, from different sources uh, such as wild and domestic animals, uh, environmental samples, uh, and clinically relevant samples as well. Uh, so um, after we surveyed um, more than 2,000 uh, strains from the, this collection, we um, were, we detected uh, 25 additional uh, candidates. So in total, 92 E. coli genomes were included into the analysis. 
Then we looked at the diversity of selected strains, and it has appeared that they span uh, four major phyla groups, uh, being A, the most abundant one. Uh, strains from uh, LRF collection and NCBA collection were more or less evenly distributed within um, more or less evenly distributed within uh, phyla groups. Uh, we also looked for other characteristics of these strains, such as sequence types, serotypes, uh, present serotypes, presence of uh, virulence and my antimicrobial resistant genes, uh, whisper cas genes and so on, but we haven't found any correlation of these uh, features with uh, the presence of keepalins in the genome. Um, so then we uh, uh, analyzed uh, uh, the genomes uh, with a pipeline, and in all of the, them, we were able to identify pipalins. Uh, and uh, the interesting moment is that all E. coli pipalines were integrated into the same tRNA layout gene. <clears throat> Here you could see a uh, comparative representation of some of the found pipalines. And uh, you can see that they uh, have duplications, deletions, uh, translocations, and other uh, genetic rearrangements so that are characteristic of mobile genetic elements. Uh, the most abundant group uh, uh, among uh, E. coli pipalines uh, contained can be distinguished by the presence of two uh, genes of integrases uh, of tyrosine uh, integrases of tyrosine recombinase superfamily, and here as well. Um, then we can distinguish also a small group of pipalines from the strains of phyla group D uh, with a single integrase or without any integrases, which might lead to the impairment of pipaline mobilization. Uh, then um, at, in some of uh, the genomes, we found three ATT sites. And when we looked closer, it has appeared that uh, these pipalines shared an integration site with uh, some prof age. Uh, then we also uh, retrieved some inconsistent people in, such as unusually long uh, ones or the one with the truncated form of PIPOV and unusual gene composition. When we looked closer, closer at them, uh, it has appeared that they uh, have genes uh, that usually found in transposons or insertion sequences. So other mobile genetic elements might have contributed to the variability of these pipalines. As I mentioned earlier, all uh, E. coli pipalines uh, were integrated into the same gene. And when we uh, align, what we did, we uh, took all ATT repeats that flank E. coli pipalines and aligned them. And it has appeared that uh, uh, they have a, a, a very, conservative ATT motif, quite long, and uh, with just several positions allowing some variability. Uh, mm, to show that uh, how diverse, to understand how diverse uh, the found people is in their gene composition, we did pan genome analysis, and uh, we were surprised to find out that uh, more than uh, Around 400 genes um, mm, were included in the mm, pipaline span genome. Here, uh, from the hierarchical clustering of gene presence as absence matrix, as well as from this pie chart, you can see that uh, more than uh, 350 genes were included into cloud genomes, genome. Uh, uh, in, in other words, they were present in less than 15% of, uh, of people in. And uh, core genome and soft core gene genome were, pre uh, were consisted of only a single gene, uh, the PIPOB and uh, the XRC like uh, recombinase. And uh, uh, only 34 uh, genes were present in a shell genome. So, 
in conclusion, what we have talked about today is about uh, some details uh, of design and implementation of export in pipeline uh, that, uh, that is designed to identify bacterial pipalines. Then we've talked about uh, our study of E. coli pipalines, and we showed that pipalines present in a wide range of E. coli strains. Uh, they are flanked by conservative ter terminal diotrepids and integrated into the same tRNA gene. And uh, pipalines are highly diverse in their genetic structure and composition, although they possess a certain level of synteny. Uh, for those of you who are interested in more details of this study, because so many details left out of the scope of my talk, uh, I would welcome you to read uh, the paper uh, mentioned at the bottom of the slide and uh, um, about ongoing and future work. Of course, uh, besides uh, improving the pipeline, uh, we would like <coughs> now uh, to run the pipeline on genomes from different bacteria, from different bacteria phyla, and uh, to create a database of bacterial people. I would like to greatly, greatly thank my PI, uh, Dr. Modesto Rodrigo Rodriguez from the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, and my co-PI, uh, Dr. Maria de Toro Hernando from the Centro de Investigación Biomédica de La Rioja, Sibir. And also, I would like to thank all members of the laboratory of new mechanism of DNA replication and repair, uh, which is led by Modesto Rodrigo Rodriguez. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for listening to my talk today. Uh, I'm ready to answer your question now. Thank you. Thank you, Lubo. That was a very great talk and quite interesting, to be honest, because um, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, this is a very new topic and there's not a lot of content about it. So as you mentioned in your motivation, this is one of those topics that have hardly been touched by researchers in general. Yes. Yes. So uh, let me just look at the questions. Uh, in the audience, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to write it in the chat box. In the meantime, I had a question for you. So you had mentioned that you're planning to eventually build a database out of this. So how uh, exactly yes. do you plan to evaluate the predictions of people lens that you predict? Because as you mentioned that this is not a very explored field. So how do you um, want to evaluate your predictions? Uh, first of all, uh, all people in uh, uh, should contain PI pole B gene. So uh, the main uh, um, concern uh, about uh, how well we predict uh, them is uh, how well we predict P PI pole B gene. Uh, for, uh, actually, uh, they, as I said, the PI pole B genes from different bacteria share low similarity. And uh, sometimes they also similar to other um, different uh, pole Bs uh, uh, from the family B family, family, family B. So <laughs> yes, uh, this is uh, our main concern. Uh, and uh, then um, when we found PA pole B and when we, uh, if we were lucky to found terminal repeats, uh, more or less we may be certain that uh, it's a pipaline element. Okay. Thanks. And we don't know any characteristics of this uh, mobile element so far. So maybe in future we will include any steps, other steps, such as maybe looking for specific, uh, other specific genes or into specific integrases, for example. So it is a known fact that whenever that particular gene is present, that's where the pipeline has to be. Yes, of course, uh, we cannot exclude a situation when PA will be just sitting alone in the genome. Somehow uh, it's not within uh, people in. Uh, so when we don't know element boundaries or maybe other characteristics, uh, we can be sure, of course. Right. 
thank you um, we still don't have any questions so i guess uh, this is it thank you very much for thank presenting you. your work here today and i hope that you continue collaborating with us presenting your work here in the future thank you yes sure and thank you very much for this nice and uh, quite explaining talk thank you uh sorry we have a question right now so mm -hmm. uh the question is that what methods were used for visualizing your date uh, uh we used the uh, easy fix software a lot uh, it's a uh, well known uh, written on python uh, but on python too <laughs> uh and uh, it has a uh, kind of, uh, it's it has common uh, it uh, it has common line uh, interface and uh, also um visual interface so it's quite easy to use um then of course any other software can be used it's there are some uh recently appeared very interesting maybe we will use them too. okay i hope that answers uh naim's question i i hope so yeah, let's wait for a couple of seconds if there's a follow up question. Yep, uh, your answer was quite satisfactory for Naeem, and he's thanking you for the presentation. Uh, Thank you. Could you just uh, explain which app was used for it? Which, sorry? Could which application repeat? was used for it, for the visualizations? Uh, easy Peek. OK, great. It's written kind of like easy and figure Peek. Awesome. So uh, I guess that was the only question we had. Thank you once again. And we hope Thank to see you. you again in our webinar Thank series. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.